Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Meta Cafe. Grab your cup of coffee or your tea, sit back and relax, and let's chat about what is going on in the sky. We have a, a bit of a wild week on tap for us, and given to so many different changes going on in the sky, um, be prepared. <laughs> So hopefully today we can talk a little bit about how to make you prepared for that eventual crazy crazies of the week. And whether it's coming from the outside uh, into your world or whether it's coming from within you, the week promises to be a little bit crazy. How did everybody do this weekend? It was a crazy, busy weekend. It went by in a flash of... I don't even know what to say about these weekends lately. You know, every year right around this time, it's really busy. From about August through through the month of December and even into January, it's a little crazy in my house, in my family. We have birthdays, we have football, we have uh, kids, you know, parties to go to Thanksgiving and then uh, two more birthdays in December and then Christmas. Ah, so it is one busy weekend after another. So imagine my surprise when I looked at the calendar and realized next weekend I get to just relax. I don't have any place that I have to be. I might even be able to catch up on some things that I've been, you know, wanting to get caught up on. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to next weekend, although there is a full week in between me and that weekend. And that is what I'm here to talk to you about today because it is going to be one heck of a week. As we begin the week with the moon in Leo, yesterday afternoon or evening, it moved into, the moon moved into Leo out of the side of Cancer, where it had been from Friday morning, I think it was, right after we started the show on Friday morning, all the way through Sunday afternoon. And so we didn't really get to talk about what the moon means when it's in Leo, so we're going to do that this morning. And the moon in Leo today is in a square to Mercury retrograde. So that might mean we are, our thoughts, our words, our deeds may be taken back in time in some way, shape, or form. Maybe we're going to get to the source of some issue. Maybe we're going to be able to see or hear something that we haven't been able to see or hear before. And there's a lot of listening energy in the field for the day. So that might mean the square to Mercury is uh, by the moon is going to bring us up uh, some interesting tidbits. Let's see, right? Uh, so the moon in Leo today, the only aspect it's making that's new is the square to Mercury retrograde and the Leo moon. Let's talk about what that means. So the moon in Leo is all about self-expression. And it is often in this case because the moon represents emotions. It is about emotional expression where we are expressing our passion for something, for what we do, for people in our lives, for something, a cause, uh, something in the world that we're excited about. And it is also our eagerness then to be able to um, share that information with an audience, whether that is the people that you work with or somebody in your family, or even if it is, you know, just, um, your everyday speech we want to share from our passion what it is that uh, you know we love and what it is that we want to do uh today's also the moon in or the moon in leo also creative self-expression so here's there's a lot of creative energy in the field and that creative energy leads us to ambition and then the ambition then leads to taking action now, of course, Leo is the sign of the child. It is the sign of being a child or literally uh, being in that innocent, wide-eyed wonder of what is going on in the world, you know, creating a space where we can, uh, you know, connect with things that are out there in a more childlike, enthusiastic way. And such, as such, there's also the energy of fun and games, celebrations, taking a vacation, playing, there's also risk taking with this moon. The Leo moon gets us into the mood to do some things that we wouldn't normally do. So we want to watch for taking cautious risk, let's say. I know those are sort of, you know, moving in opposite directions. Uh, calculated risks. That's the other term I usually come up with. Uh, taking calculated risks in what it is that you're doing. And then, of course, today's also the day for the drama of love. 
right, the next couple of days, not just today. The drama of love, including love, romance, being happy with a partner or in uh, the hunt for a partner that you could be happy with, um, surprising people with gifts or being surprised yourself with gifts. There's this dramatic flair that the moon and Leo brings us to sometimes around what is possible in love and romance. Of course, we don't talk about Leo without talking about the ego. And this is possible, uh, possibly an ego takeover today, um, today, tomorrow, where we can be overly self-absorbed. We can be leaning into being more selfish as opposed to self-centered. Um, when I say self-centered, of course, I usually mean someone who's actually very centered in themselves, not selfish. So to me, self-centered is a good thing to be where selfish isn't so good, right? Um, but also, I guess you could say overly self-centered could be overly self-absorbed. Self and the other last thing sort of to watch out for is winning at other people's expenses. So it may be, you know, such a competitive spirit out there um, that winning at all costs is a problem. And we see that kind of in the world anyway. So today with, again, the moon in a square to Mercury retrograde, watch what's going on in your mind. Listen deeply. And uh, we'll talk about that a little more in a minute because the Pleiadian Earth energy today also supports that deep listening energy. Uh, let's say good morning to people who are popping in. Good morning, Debbie Tibbetts, Two Meal, and Amy Moore. Uh, Marissa, good morning. Laura Pass Kammer, good morning. And Asa, good morning. Colleen, good morning. Um, uh, Mimi, good morning. Great to see you. Amy Moore says, so funny. I pulled a card for every sign this morning and pulled the child for Leo. Perfect. 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 If you see things moving behind me, that's my cat. She's got a case of the kitty giddies and she's running around. Um, here she comes again. <laughs> I'm always afraid she's going to jump on me. Uh, Kristen, good morning. And Londa, good morning. Kitty giddies, what can I say? Uh, so I hope everybody had a great weekend. I'm so glad to see you all checking in. I'm so glad that I can actually see myself today. Uh, as in then I, when I hold up a chart or something, you can I can see that you can see it. The other day just drove me crazy not being able to see. Um, okay, let's take a look at the week ahead. This promises to be one heck of a week. Energetically, there is a lot going on. And the, we start out the week right in the, in the thick of things with the uh, Pleiadian energy of five listening. It is moving energy and it is deep listening energy. It is transformative and it is change oriented. So we'll talk a little more about that in a moment. Um, if you're on the West Coast, late this evening, 11.40 p.m., the planet Mars, action and assertion, aggression, uh, moves into a sign it rules, Scorpio. That means all day today, uh, the planet Mars is sitting at the 29th degree of Libra. We have lessons to learn. We have karma to dispel. We may have uh, rewards coming to us for all the work we've done while Mars has been in Libra, trying to balance things and live from our values. Um, however, tomorrow, uh, for most of us, for most of you, <laughs> from, from the mountain time over, you all will experience uh, Mars moving into Scorpio tomorrow. And Mars in Scorpio is in a sign that he rules or co-rules with the planet Pluto. So there's a lot of energy here, a lot of potential for explosions and crises, etc. We're going to talk more about that in just a few minutes. And it will be, Mars will be in the sign of Scorpio all the way through the holidays up to January 3rd when it will move into the sign of Sagittarius. So we have big things going, moving through here, big emotional things. On the 20th, Wednesday, Mercury will move direct and, or it will station direct. That means for a while, for a short time, Mercury will just hang in the balance between retrograde and direct. There's the station where it gets to the point where it's no longer moving backwards and it hangs there for a brief time and then it begins the movement forward. 
and of course it'll take another few weeks before mercury clears the retrograde zone and goes into new territory and i re i think that was december 9th that that will occur and god help me i cannot even believe we are that close to december can you believe it yourself we are heading into the last two weeks of the month of november and not long after that of course christmas and new year it's just crazy uh, also, on the 22nd, which is Friday, the sun will finish its transit through Scorpio and move into Sagittarius. We move from deep water to changeable fire, and that should change energetically some of the, the things that we're experiencing and the, the vibe on the planet will change. I'm not sure that that makes it a change for the better, but it definitely signals a change. We're coming out of the deep and into the more of the expression of the things that have been happening. So then not only do we get, you know, those changes, but on Sunday, which is likely going to be the craziest day of the week, we have the moon in Scorpio. Um, and of course, Mars having moved into Scorpio, that means the moon is going to meet up with Scorpio or meet, meet up with Mars and Scorpio, that could bring us up some pretty emotional energy on Sunday. As well, Venus will conjunct Jupiter that day, both of them in the very last couple of degrees of Sagittarius. So we're also preparing for a sign change with Jupiter that we'll be talking about as we get into next week. It doesn't actually change signs until December 2nd, but can you feel the pulse of things like quickening? Can you feel like that you know, we were at this point and now we've come, we're coming closer to the point of the Sagittarian arrow. Um, we are quickening. We are getting closer and closer to uh, some form of big bang, let's say. And the big bang doesn't have to necessarily be a bad thing, but something big is coming. We can all feel it. I know we can. And uh, th that day, Sunday, is also Mars in early degrees of Scorpio in an opposition to uh, Uranus and Taurus, also in early degrees of Taurus. So we have the possibility for fireworks and big booms. Uh, we have the moon. So emotionally, uh, at the ed, end of a, uh, some kind of emotional trigger, Venus conjunct Jupiter, making things magnified and bigger. So the end of the week likely is going to be pretty crazy. So expect <laughs> that we will have one crazy week. I already hear, you know, the rumblings going on in the outer world from things happening with Brexit and the elections in uh, uh, England, uh, the pr that Prince Andrew's um, talking to the press about the Jeffrey Epstein thing to our own impeachment proceedings here in this country. And God help you all around the world, whatever is happening in your neck of the woods, just remember... It seems so real, <laughs> but we've created this moment in space and time for some reason, and getting to that point is exactly what's necessary in order to move our world forward. It doesn't have to feel good to move forward sometimes, and uh, yeah, craziness. So crazy week. Next week's not much better, so just prepare the last two weeks of the month and the first week of December, likely going to be heralding some pretty big energies that may make you feel like you've had a whiplash or that your head is going round and round. By the way, I just want to, speaking of child energy, I just want to say a quick hello to two little fans of mine down in New Zealand, Ezra and Tova. Good morning to you. And uh, I'm so happy to see such youthful energy engaged in learning about astrology. I just get giddy thinking about it. So I just wanted to say hello to you all out there. Uh, in New Zealand. So let's take a look now at the Pleiadian energy for today. Uh, let me see quick comments, anything going on out here in the world that you guys are just dying to know about. Uh, Londa, Jan, good morning to you. Diana Bolgard, good morning. And Mimi says, oh my, we'll keep my boots on. Yep, likely the poop is going to get deep. Christine Erickson, good morning to you. Uh, you know, life is really, truly interesting because I feel like on one hand, I'm experiencing life through my family and all of the, the comings and goings and birthdays and celebrations that are going on. And on the other hand, there's this deep 
pile of doo-doo over here that I feel like I've stepped in or that I feel like all of us have stepped in that, you know, I'm trying to kick off my shoe and uh, I'm not sure, you know, what all of that meaning is. I mean, there, it just seems so like there's just these two separate things going on in my life. And I, I, I'm not sure what to make of that because in, if I look at my own personal self in my own personal life, the weather is smooth and calm. Yes, we're very busy and we have lots of things going on. There is traumas and dramas in some respects, but it, it's that outer world that I look at and I just, I just want to shake my head because I can't even believe the things that I hear that people say or the way that people are treating one another, shootings and, and oh gosh, just stuff like that. I, I read a, a meme the other day on, uh, I think it was an Instagram, that there was a list of flags for all the different countries around the world and, about the number of children that are killed in school <laughs> or in shootings. And, you know, some of the countries that we think of as third world countries have maybe one or two. And the, then you get up to the number nine, I think it is, that's the most in another country. And then you get to the United States, 288 children involved in school shootings, dying. I, I, that just side smacked me. I, I just can't even believe that. And I don't know. I don't even profess to know what the answers are to all of this, the, these things, you know, that are happening like that. But there has to be a point in time when we stand up and we say no more. No more. Children are supposed to be safe in schools. They're supposed to go there and get an education. And the education shouldn't be about fear and wonder about, you know, am I going to come out of this alive? And uh, wondering, you know, from their point of view, wondering what the flip we adults are doing out there in the world, that this could be happening, that this is being allowed to happen in their safe zone. I, I don't know. I don't know what that answer is. But I do know that at some point we really have to address it. And how are we even going to address something like that when we can't even get along in our governments? when we can't even make decisions in the government's standpoint that makes sense for us in a world. And yet there's hope. I mean, we see the good news. I, I, I hope you guys tune into the Good News Network um, because there's some really cool things that are happening in the world um, that, you know, really, you know, that, that it's so muted and quiet, right? Because there's so much other big stuff going on. And I think sometimes we're more inclined to listen to the dramas and the traumas of the world uh, like we're voyeurs into the dark, deep recesses of humanity, rather than looking at the high side of humanity and what could be. I don't even get what that's all about, but there it is, right? We have these outlets that are sharing some of the most wonderful things, but it's, I bet you never hear it unless you go looking for it. Of course, there are a couple of news outlets out there that, you know, the Good News Network is just one of the networks out there that are looking for the good in everything. But certainly the noisiest noise that we hear is from the bad news. So here we come to a day then, a day where we can change what it is that we're listening to. The energy of the Pleiadian calendar today is five listening, five being the universal energy of the day. So no matter what planet we're on, no matter what life form we are, we are universally um, vibrating to the energy of change and to moving, uh, moving energy. And then on the earth side of things, we are all engaged in listening, which was Akbal in the Mayan calendar. And it represented the night. It represented the void. It represented the darkness. It, it represented the stillness. And from that stillness, being able to hear, to listen into something deeper. And moving energy brings us to aliveness through change and through motion, transformation and challenges inherent in that. And what we're being, what's being required of us as humans is to adjust our path, adjust our intention, adjust the voice that you're listening to or the point from which you're listening it brings us all about the power of choice and where this energy is curious 
It causes us to imagine the unimaginable. Um, so if we thought about that, what, what would be something that good, positive, let's say positive, unimaginable thing that could happen, right? Some miracle happens that suddenly in whatever country you are, the worst problem that you have is solved in the most wondrous, unique, authentic way. I mean, it seems unimaginable from my standpoint here right now that we could somehow change uh, what is going on in the United States and engage in a conversation that is unifying instead of dividing. So the unimaginable for me would be tapping into that energy that brings us together without, of course, a trauma or a drama or a disaster or catastrophe. We don't need that to bring us together, but it seems like those are the only times we come together. So here today we get this power of choice where maybe we can imagine the unimaginable happening and leave open to the universe to bring it to us in whatever way is in our best interest. This is also a day where we have to have patience, where we can't just, I know that because the moon is in Leo, there's that risk taking energy that we're feel that that field of, you know, let's just take a, a jump and, and run into something, you know, do something different. Um, but we might want to think a little bit before we do. <laughs> we may want to make sure that we don't engage in things that are unduly risky, daredevil behaviors. My I got up yesterday morning, I slept in. I got up and my husband was already up and he was watching some kind of show on TV. So what I wake up to is motorcycle accidents, you know, uh, uh, those guys, daredevils. That's all I can think of that jump over cars. And what it was, was like the most serious crashes imaginable that people walked away from. So on the high side, they survive these things and walk away from them. But on the other side, it's this crash that's happening that we we're seeing in slow motion the disaster that's about to unfold i feel kind of like that's where we're sitting right now we have this disaster around us that's about to unfold we can't do much about it except tap in and choose from our own inner world where we what we are going to react or how we're going to react what uh, our power is in choice not in controlling anything about what's going on out there so even though we can see it happening and we can see it like building, there isn't much we can do except choose what we think and what we put our focus on. Now, the energy of listening also takes us into that meditative, quiet, still point or the stillness, the point at which the point before the thought comes and Remember last week we talked about the nodes, the north node moving into the gate 52, which is the gate of the gift of stillness or the city of stillness. It is the point at which we have gotten so quiet within us that we have so quieted the mind that time seems to stop. And in that spot, that in that utter quiet, before there is a thought, we have the space to choose what we think, right? What, what do we want to create? We get to come to a spot where we can hear from the stillness, we can hear the voice of God or source, or we can hear the cosmos. This is super, super important for all of us right now, as Jupiter and Venus, both as they're building toward their conjunction, are also sitting rather close and on top of uh, the galactic center, the source, the pulse that comes to all of uh, the solar system that would be considered perhaps the voice of the cosmos or the voice of God or source energy. So what is it we are hearing from that place? And this is our invitation then to dive into or descend into the dark space, into the deep, into the void, right? The, the to receive guidance before we take action. So we're Pay, impatience and um, risk taking might be a momentary blip on our screen, a choice that's made without thought, taking some time, some breaths, and moving into that deeper place that allows us to see or hear, um, receive guidance even before we actually do something. And here's a question I thought of. What thoughts would you think 
if you realized that they touched everyone in some way right those what thoughts would you think if you realized that they touched everyone in some way that the mere thought that someone is annoying to you or the mere thought that you absolutely adore someone what does that thought have as an impact on everyone around you every thought you have has impact and that's the part i think that we forget about we forget that even our thoughts no one may be hearing out loud what you're saying in your mind but there's an energy in those thoughts that are waves that are moving out from you and people tap into that people can feel it or they can sense it they can maybe even you know if they're uh like me i hear other people's thoughts at times without even recognizing that that's what i'm doing so what thoughts would you think if you realized that they touched everyone in some way? I think it would cause you to pull yourself up short and to, and to even ask the question, well, what thoughts am I thinking? What thoughts are in my mind? <laughs> What's going on in my head? Because they have such power to affect other people. Okay. Uh, Colleen, um, she says, yes, time to get out the dragon's blood protection, crystals, etc. Allison, good morning to you. Londa says we need deep listening, diving deeper, opening, surrendering to allow all that we are to receive, to be received from source. This leads us to a higher truth and yes, stillness. And it's, you know, what to, to Londa's point, it's from the point of stillness that we can even hear the voice of God or spirit. And I know, you know, some of you out there are, are very much not god people like it, it's some it used to make me very uncomfortable to hear the word god and that is because of some of the religious crud that i went through in my life but um i've since come to recognize that that's a, a word that is a catch-all for many different divine faces you could say of spirit and uh so if you're uncomfortable with god use cosmos if you're uncomfortable with that use source use goddess use whatever it is that to you is the energy that embodies our higher knowing our higher connection our higher spirit and that is the voice that you want to hear not the voice of the ego and trust me when i say that this first couple of days this week the ego is pretty powerful leo represents the ego energies or it's very much tapped into the ego energies. And there's nothing wrong necessarily with ego energies. The ego has kept us alive for a very long time. But the ego energies are telling you things to be safe or to take actions based in security uh, out of fear, not from the place of love or being true to your higher self. We have to go to spirit for that, or we have to go to source for that, or we have to go deeper within. I, I, I want to make sure that you're not mis, I'm not misrepresenting the pathway to God, to God, a source or cosmos, whatever you want to call it. It's not a path that lies outside of you. It's a path that lies within you when you go within to the stillness. I hope that makes sense to everybody. Thank you, Londa. That was, that was good. Dawn, good morning. Wow. What thoughts would you think if you realized that they touched everyone in some way? I will be sharing that. Please do. And then, you know, please contemplate that. Uh, what thoughts would you think if you realized that they touched everyone in some way and you're part of that, that your thoughts are also touching you, yourself, in some way? So when you're pointing negative thoughts at yourself, what are you doing to your body, to your mind, to your heart, to your soul? Thoughts are not just these frivolous, things that we think of they're powerful they have impact and over the court the, the the blessing of the planet earth is that the thoughts we think don't immediately come to pass right the density of this planet allows that energy to slow down and not necessarily come it's not every thought that you think that comes into fruition um but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be taking great care in what it is that we're thinking. And today's a great day for tapping into that. 
seeing, hearing, hearing what it is that you're saying, what the voices in your head are saying. Good morning, Mary. And Mimi says, often when I find no obvious answers, I find myself setting the intent for the highest good for all concerned. That's pretty cool. That's really good, Mimi. Thank you for sharing that. That's really, really good idea. Setting the intent for the highest good of all concerned. Perfect. And then what kind of thoughts would you think around that, right? The thoughts then become more open, more heart-centered perhaps. Um, you know, I know I can't see your hands, but raise your hand if you're having digestive issues at this moment in your life, either new or strengthened uh, issues going on in your digestive system, in your stomach, in the intestines, in the elimination system. Um, are you feeling more anxiety in the gut, that kind of thing? That energy that's going on in your digestive system tells you a lot about the mind gut connection and the mind and the gut connection giving you more info on the emotional connection that's going on the effect if you will of what some of your thoughts are the body is a great representation of where your thoughts are and if those thoughts get caught up in a rut or get caught up in a space over time especially in let's say a negative space over time then the body begins to really show you that in disease or or pain or you know discomfort and when your body does because your natural state is not dis-ease your natural state is ease is health is wealth is bounty which takes me to the human design week the sun's just moved into the gate 14 which brings us bounteousness but it's going to get lost in the scream and the screech of what's going on in the outer world if we're not careful as to what we're tapping into. In fact, I didn't even, it's not, it was on my radar that that's the gate, but I got so caught up in all the other things going on that it's on the back burner now until tomorrow because, oh, well, I might bring it up uh, because uh, we still have Mars moving into Scorpio to contend with here. And what is that going to bring to us? So be careful what you think, make sure your, your, your thoughts are, if you're connected to your thinking, then what you get is an opportunity to hear what's really going on deep within. And good morning, Heather. Good morning, Asa says, oh my God, yes, 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 yes. I'm, I think she's talking about, you know, creating listening to a deeper place. Um, I might even make that a mantra for the week. What thoughts am I thinking? What thoughts would I think if I realized that they touched everyone hmm. in some way? Deep questions we ask here sometimes. Okay, let's transition over to the biggest news of today, tomorrow. So we have a, a cusp going on. If you're here in the, the West, uh, you're going to experience it this evening, probably late enough you're in bed, so we might as well just talk about it as tomorrow's big news, that Mars will be in Scorpio. And today, that means Mars is at the final degree, the 29th degree, a karmic degree of Libra. And this gives us an idea of um, what, it, what maybe we've brought into balance while Mars was in there, or where did Mars maybe show us we were out of balance? where the scales were tipped one way or the other and or where harmony wasn't uh, present and giving us that opportunity to bring some things into harmony or balance before it moves into the deep. Um, so today is definitely a day you want to avoid making rash decisions or taking any unnecessary risks. Again, that's a juxtaposition against that Leo energy of the moon that sometimes takes us to the edge of risk. And that's why I said calculated risks, okay, but don't just take rash action types of risks because they may not turn out the way that you expected. So here we go. Avoid rash decisions or taking any unnecessary risks while we're sitting at the very sensitive point of the 29th degree of Libra. Now, when we move into, when Mars moves into Scorpio, Mars is driven and totally focused 
on getting what it wants when it moves into Scorpio. Remember, it's a sign that it co-rules with Pluto. And he has a lot of power when he is in this sign. We may be drawn ourselves to explore our own personal depths, as well as, God help us, people out in the outer world poking us or us poking others to expose their depths as well. Now put that in the context of some of the political things going on in the world. And it, it feels like, you know, there are swords that, you know, the, what is that? The, I think it's the 10 of swords, or maybe it's the nine of swords in the tarot deck where there's this body lying on a slab and these swords are just hanging there over the body waiting to pierce it. I feel like that's kind of some of this energy that we may be experiencing over the next uh, several weeks while Mars will be in Scorpio. But being drawn to explore the depths is a good thing. On, on, the, on one level, it takes us into that depth that we've already been playing with. Venus went through Scorpio. Mercury is in Scorpio retrograde until Wednesday. And then we'll move forward in Scorpio with Mars in Scorpio then. The sun will just finish later this week its transit through Scorpio. So we've already been digging up sort of the, the darkness or the uh, motivations, the secrets that are lying within us. Mars just comes in like a power horse behind it and exposes what's left. You know, um, we I live in a very rural area. There's a lot of farmland around and you watch uh, seasonally what's going on in the fields. You know, there's a lot of preparation work that goes into um, the actual planting of the seeds that will come to harvest in the summer or in the fall. And if you think about what's happened now with these planets moving through Scorpio, where they've dug up the ground, right? They've cleaned out the old and maybe gone through and uh, broken up the big rocks or the big, you know, chunks. And now Mars comes through with the final pass of the energies of Scorpio, digging up what doesn't belong or the dark places. And so we're drawn to explore our personal depths. And we tend to, in some cases, poke other people into provoke, let's call it prov provocation, provoke others into that as well. But sometimes, again, it's the other people that are provoking you to get into a space of looking deeper into fear, into the shadow, into what isn't, um, what has not been dealt with in your life. I, you know, I was kind of gobsmacked a couple of weeks ago myself when suddenly I found myself back in an old part of myself dealing with self-worth issues and, and just wondering, what the heck? Why is this coming back up? It tried to come back up again, you know, yesterday and into this morning. And I'm like, I really do not need to go here anymore. Right. So maybe this is my final swan song around that. Right. I don't know. But certainly what gets triggered in all of you is where there is still some kind of charge on a fear or a shadow energy. So on one hand, we want to sort of embrace that taking place. But on the other hand, we also want to take care that we are not being the ones that are uh, imposing that on other people, at least not needlessly or harshly. So being very careful. Um, we may witness extremes in emotions, behaviors, crisis energy. Mars loves a good crisis and so does Pluto and they're both the co-rulers of Scorpio. Scorpio works its magic when it's in crisis. So we may see crisis energy of some sort moving through the field. Is it financial crisis? I know that there's a, a, a ten, tendency when uh, planets hit Scorpio that there's some kind of financial focus. I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit different focus than financial in that Mars is sitting at the gate 50 in human design as it moves into Scorpio. And that is the gate of values. So we're questioning values. We have a crisis in America in not living our values, tromping on the values that have defined our nation for 200 some years. And what does that mean? And what do we do with that? And how do we work with that? In your own personal lives, there are your, your personal values. And Mars is a personal planet. 
remember we talked about how planets from Mars to Venus to the moon, the sun, Mercury, uh, Earth herself, they're all personal planets, meaning that they affect us personally and individually because they're in the inner um, realm of the planets. We have then Jupiter and Saturn that sort of are the transpersonal planets. They hold the key, the gateway to the outer planets, um, Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto, and anything else further out there uh, that are the collective planets. So when collective planets are making their moves, it doesn't so much affect you personally, except to say as what it is your part as a part of the bigger collective. So the collective soul of a country, uh, of the earth herself, or of uh, your community or tribe, and whatever your effect is in that. But we have co-rulers in, in Scorpio. We have a personal planet, Mars, and a, a collective planet, Pluto. So we have big changes going on in the collective that are also affecting you personally, and your own personal transformation affecting the collective. There's sort of this mutual sharing going on. And that mutual sharing can be focused toward values. And remember in looking at a human design chart, I'll show you this really quickly before I go on to the next subject. Here's the gate 50. Mars is sitting at the gate 50 now. Uranus is sitting at the gate 27. Mars and Uranus, right? two explosive points, planets that are sitting in a place that is the feminine side of the tribal energy. And so if you think of the tribe as an organism, the community, the nation, the earth of human beings as an organism, this is the feminine side of that organism. It is the job of the feminine to lay the template for values. What do we value? Right? What do we value as a tribe or a community? What do we value as a nation? And then the gate 27 on the other side is the gate of teaching then the people or the individuals engaged in the tribe, the community, the collective to live by those values. So we have a teaching channel here. And that teaching channel is about how do we live and work together as a positive force in the world as opposed to the negative force in the world. But sometimes, as we know, it is the negative that gets more focus and more attention. And then eventually, at some point here, I'm hoping we get really tired of hearing about all of the icky stuff going on, all of the, the shadow stuff going on, and we begin to really just say enough is enough. It is going to be the feminine energy that rises up and says enough is enough. We're done with that. We're done with watching you treat people horribly. We're done with watching you trash our values as a nation or as a country or as an, a tribe or a community. And it'll be the feminine then that says, here's what we're going to do about it. And it's the masculine job, the masculine on the other side, which is the empty place right now, to take those values and enact them. It is the energy that is very Mars-like. It takes it out into the world. And that is the correct path of the energy of the feminine and the masculine, right? Not woman and man necessarily, feminine and masculine. I'm talking about energies now. And so with Mars and Uranus holding the spot in this channel for really bringing up the, the feminine, the divine fem feminine, and causing it to take action in the world, it really makes me think that if we're going to have crises and emotional things going on, it's going to come from the feminine rising and saying enough is enough, right? We're done. We're done with that. That is, you know, our dividing line. And I don't know what it's going to take to reach it. I, I just don't know. Maybe we got there. I have no idea, but I'm hoping and I'm praying that we as individuals will feel enough uh, is enough and we will then begin the thought processes that create a new reality right we will begin to resonate with our values and it is going to be the individual i really believe that as we move into the 2020s the next decades the next decade i mean that we're going to see the influence of the individual the rise of the individual 
the rise of the of the power of the individual and where before we've given our power away to governments or we've given our power away to uh, power brokers or power structures that that next decade is going to be about how do we bring it in and claim it for ourselves so we're on the cusp people <laughs> the cusp of some very big very extraordinary energies uh and a, a good message to take with you is that it's utterly you that has the responsibility to clean up your thoughts clean up your fears clean up your dirt and then begin to put and inject your shiny self right your your light into the world and not your dark into the world that is our job right now from here on through the 2020s putting our light into the world and it's a conscious choice to do so and i don't mean to say that you've not been putting your light into the world it's not that at all it's that you know so many other things have drug us back into the dark the wrong kind of dark right when i was talking earlier about the dark i was talking about the space within the space the void right the the point where nothing is chosen yet and in that space, that void, that dark, you can choose what comes next. What will I think? What will I choose to do? But the other kind of dark on the planet, the part that's obscured from our vision, or the part that we've been living in, uh, is now about to change as we individually apply our light to the collective. I hope that makes sense for everybody. All right, I'm going to take a last look here. Um, Dawn says, yes, I noticed that my stomach is a barometer of quality of my thoughts, especially negative thoughts about my physical body shuts down digestion. Yikes. Yes, exactly. Such a profound thing, right? To notice in your own body. And you can see if you, if you can see in your own body, the negative ramifications of your thoughts, just think about what you could, what we do collectively to the, what we do as individuals to the collective with those same kinds of thoughts. Uh, Londa, time to go back to bed under the covers for a while or turn on a Hallmark movie. Um, yeah, I don't know. This morning I didn't want to get out of bed. I know that. But uh, hiding isn't going to help us either. Right? Hiding isn't going to help us. Uh, Kathy Miller says, good morning. Why is it I'm being called to sit at hospital? Grandson's GF serious illness. I don't know what that means. GF serious illness. I don't mind, but a small part of me can't understand. I want no one when I'm ill. Uh, that's you, Kathy. That's the beauty of all of us being different, right? Londa says acceleration in our spiritual growth if we clear our minds and listen. Yes, listening, listening, listening. But, but you got to be careful to what you're listening to. I, I think there's real beauty in hearing, listening to what it is that you're actually saying to yourself or, you know, what that voice is that's taking place within you. And, but listening doesn't mean that you keep hearing the same message over and over. I think it's a point where you get to choose then what, what am I going to hear next, right? What am I going to focus my thoughts on next? I'm going to draw us a couple of cards to, for the week before I end the broadcast this morning. So these will be cards that hopefully will help us move through the energies. And as these big shifts and changes take place on the planet, some completely and utterly out of our control. All we get to control is what we think about and how we react to what is going on in our world. <laughs> And I pulled the card thinker, thinker, thinker. And it was right side up, uh, card number 44, a very powerful master number, 44, thinker. Let's see what that has to do. Somebody last Friday got that card personally. Um, so fun. 44, so the essential meaning of the card is strategy, being analytical and logical. The ability to reason and strategize is the focus now. Take things at face value and follow the logical path. Your calculations will prove to be correct, for in this moment there is no deeper meaning than what is obvious. Things are exactly as they seem. 
You have all the information you need. Keep it simple and you will win the game of life you're playing right now. Prosperity message. I want to read that one because it says calculated action is called for now. It's important to sit down and plan a strategy. Focus on the steps you're going to take to claim your prosperous life. Lists are your friend now. So get out your journal. Write down what you're going to do today to signal to the universe that you're serious about attracting abundance. Your plans and strategies will yield wonderful results. Remember, your most effective strategic, strategic partner is spirit. You will win this game and your triumph will be for the highest good of all. Interesting. Just interesting. Let's draw an animal card too. Okay. <laughs> Get an animal to help us along, right? To help guide us, maybe even protect us a little bit. We'll see what comes up here. And any other comments? Oh, girlfriend. <laughs> Grandson's girlfriend, serious illness. Oh, well, hopefully we send her out some healing energy and see how things go for her. Ah, interesting. Okay, so the card I drew was wasp spirit. Sometimes life stings. And it was upside down in protection. Wasp, card number 64. And that's a 10, which is a one wasp spirit. Sometimes life stings in protection. And I don't believe we have ever pulled that card. I don't believe I've ever pulled that card even in an, a reading for myself. But let's see, we'll hold a space for it. Wasp spirit in protection. Are you holding on to anger, jealousy, or resentment because you got stung? Or could you have just stung yourself by comparing yourself to others? There will always be someone else who is more successful, happier, thinner, richer, etc. Jealousy is the false belief that you can't have what you want or someone could take away something that was supposed to be yours. I always forget that jealousy is one of those things that comes up in Scorpio, Scorpio energy, jealousy, possessiveness, revenge, all of those sort of more difficult energies. Let it go and release all those feelings that are making the sting hurt long after the stinger has been removed. Wasp spirit has woken you up and now you are called to trust that disappointment can lead you to a different path and a better path. Align with spirit now and trust that this too shall pass and is already doing so. For the pain subsides when you stop telling the story of how much it hurt. Great advice. So what looked like was going to be a bad, bad news card. <laughs> Wasn't so bad after all. Wasp spirit in protection. And thinker. Thinker. So wasp and thinker. And maybe what you discover is that it's the thoughts that are holding the sting. Right? Thoughts holding the sting. All right. Well, that is it for me today, guys. Don't forget, you are able now to sign up for the Astrology of 2020 webinar coming up on December 11th, uh, whether you can uh, um, be there in person or live, I should say, uh, or if you want to get the recording, you can do that by registering. If you don't register, you won't get the link and you won't get the replay. And of course, in order to register, to get the link to register, you've got to either pay for the webinar or you have to join the Living Astrology Academy. Either way, then you will get the, and, and sign up to the membership is basically a membership or $25 and I will send you the registration. Uh, take care. Have a wonderful day. I will see you tomorrow. We'll talk more tomorrow about the Human Design Week, where the gate 14 is where the sun is, prosperity and abundance and bounteousness, and the earth at gate 8, which is your contribution to the whole. All right, everybody, take care. Bye.